Okay, in this video, let's talk about what is the difference between proxy server and reverse proxy. So proxy is also called as uh, forward proxy. So that is what we hear. So we are going to disambiguate between proxy versus reverse proxy. Right. So this is also called as forward proxy in cases. So now let's take a look at a scenario. Let's say we work for a company and the company wants all its client computers be it uh, mobile devices, laptops, or desktops, all of the traffic we want to route through a proxy server so that it can go and connect to various servers that, that these clients are trying to talk to. Right? So this server that we deploy at the client end, this is typically called as a proxy server or call it like a forward proxy. Right? The purpose of forward proxy is to basically give the benefit to mainly these clients. That is what is the proxy. Now, if we talk about reverse proxy, if you see on the other side of internet, if we have a server deployed and the main purpose of this server is to protect the servers and hide their identity mainly from the clients. So that is called reverse proxy. So ideally you can see like this picture says it all. So the proxy server is mainly for the clients and the reverse proxy is mainly for the servers. Now, if we quickly take a benefit look of, of these both these terms. So if we see the proxy server that we put on the client side, the benefit of that is we can restrict, we can kind of block certain sites and say like these clients are not allowed to go for some sites because this proxy servers, it is what is the control channel between internet and the clients. Same way we can also do caching here. So if all these clients are trying to access the same website, what proxy server can do? We can configure proxy server to cache those pages so that first time some client requests a page from a site that is downloaded and kept on the proxy server and rest all the clients can be served from that. This will certainly improve the speed of internet for these local uh, machines over here and it will also save some bandwidth. The third benefit of using proxy server is it can hide the identity of the clients that we have here. So that means proxy server can tell to the internet that the identity of these clients are not known. Ideally, proxy server can change the IP address through which we are going on internet. So we can have our privacy and our identity hidden from the servers. Then proxy server can also have improved security. We can have some firewall. We can have some, uh, you can say, uh, antivirus running here so that any traffic that is coming in or going out can be scanned and, and malicious activities, malicious things can be blocked here and captured here. And last is sometimes what happens, you would have seen a scenario, there are some sites which stream uh, some content online, let's say there is a cricket match going on for IPL in India and uh, IPL site does not allow people from US to watch the live streaming. So what can be done is there can be a proxy server deployed in let's say India region and people from US can connect to that proxy server, they can come through proxy server and they can still access those sites. So that is basically, it can give access to the blocked content also. So this proxy server is basically, it is, it is basically working on client's behalf to hide their identity or to give them access to certain things that they would not have if they revealed their original identity. Right. So that's the benefit of proxy server. Now, as opposed to this, if somebody who is building the server infrastructure, let's say if we are deploying our servers in cloud and we want to hide the identity of the web server, same thing we will do. We will use a different software. There are softwares available which can act as reverse proxy and they actually save or hide the identity of servers from the internet. So the benefit of doing this is like this proxy server was protecting clients. This is protecting servers. That's the first benefit. Protection of server means if we want to blacklist some of the IP addresses, those IP addresses should not even be uh, served because of some malicious activity and all. We can do that at this level. Then we can do caching. The way we were doing caching for the proxy server, we can do the caching here at reverse proxy level. If some clients are trying to download some stuff from the servers, we can also have a layer here which can compress and send that data. It will certainly save some bandwidth at the server side. Then uh, sometimes what happens like we will have HTTPS, we will have secure channel to our server. So we can put the SSL termination here. That means clients are trying to request the secure resources. So all the data that travels through internet can be secured. And beyond this point, when proxy server talks to our servers, it can kind of uh, do a normal HTTP connection. So we can have one central point where SSL connections end and beyond that we can, because this is a trusted 
network on which we can do uh, non secure communication also and last one is we can do uh, ip masking uh, sometimes what happens clients directly start pinging and figuring out what is the server ip address and they can cause some sort of attacks so what we can do they can we can hide our ip addresses of servers so that they are not attacked and the proxy server can hide the ip address of our servers right so there are a lot of these services in place today we use cloudfront for reverse proxy we use nginx for reverse proxy so that is the difference between proxy and reverse proxy i hope this this clarifies the doubt and this picture says the entire thing of what is proxy and what is reverse proxy